Today in Draw My Life, Paw Patrol, the final mission. My name is Officer Michael. I've worked with the ABPD for about 10 years now. It's not the most exciting job in the world, but it helps pay the bills and put food on my table. So I can't really complain. My job usually was never easy for me. There were days that I worked for an 18 hour shift due to all the calls we received for simple mishaps. Small things like cats and trees, little fires, and occasionally a missing person every now and then. However, a small group of puppies changed my job completely. They were called the Paw Patrol. Honestly, these pups were a blessing. They meant the world to me. I remember them perfectly. Chase, the police dog, Marshall, the fire dog, Suma, the aquatic pup, Rocky, the recycling pup, Sky, the air pup, and Rubble, the construction pup. Thanks to them, peace prevailed in Adventure Bay. Plus, they had a 10-year-old leader, Ryder, a very mature and intelligent boy. He not only assembled the group, but also made their base and tower. Hell, I even got the opportunity to meet the Paw Patrol in person. And let me say it was a wonderful experience. They were well-mannered, polite, respectful of their authorities, and they sure loved to play around. They always wanted me to stay and play fetch with them. Now, you might think that with the Paw Patrol going around and filling in our duties, there might be a bit of resentment by the other cops or firefighters for them taking away some of the opportunities to make more money. But that wasn't the case at all. For years, we had broken our backs to do some small odd jobs, but now we had the opportunity to actually focus on more real cases. So yeah, honestly, the Paw Patrol was awesome. However, that all ended about a year ago. And let me just say that it was something dreadful. I was in the police station when all this happened. I was busy getting so much needed paperwork done when all of a sudden the chief busted out of his office in panic. He screamed at us to stop everything we were doing and go to the Adventure Bay Forest area ASAP. When I asked what the problem was, he told me he would explain everything when we got there. So I got up, I put on my police jacket, made my way to my squad car, and drove down to Adventure Bay Forest area. It took us about 30 minutes to get there, but once we arrived, we got out of our cars and walked towards the entrance of the forest. Once there, I noticed that Ryder, Chase, Sky, and Rubble looked very scared and worried. I walked up to them and asked them what the problem was. It's our pups! Marsha, Sumo, and Rocky, Ryder said with a worried look in his face. What about them? What's the problem? I asked. Rocky, Sumo, and Marshall went out for a swim, as well as to help Rocky with his aquaphobia about four hours ago, Chase began. But they haven't come back yet. We tried tracking their colors, but for some strange reason, we can't. We tried searching as well, but the forest was too dense to keep looking. Don't worry, Paw Patrol. We'll find them and bring them back safely. They probably forgot to take off their collars while they went swimming. They are probably still in the pond, I reassured them. Ryder thanked me for my services. After that, I made my way back to the group of police officers. The Commander-in-Chief, Officer Marcus, started placing us in pairs of two for a search party. He then assigned areas of the forest to each group. My partner, Carl and I were responsible for the main pathway of the forest. We both immediately ran to the woods to begin our search for the missing pups. Five minutes turned to 10 minutes, then to 30, then an hour, then two hours. We kept searching as hard as we could. After about three hours of our exhaustive search, the sky began to darken. My partner and I pulled out our flashlights and kept going. After about 10 minutes of walking, I felt something wrapped around my ankle. I lifted my foot and shined my light at what had caught my foot. What I saw made the hairs on the back of my neck stick up. It was one of the pup's colors. It looked as if it was jank of something. 
or in this case, somebody's body, as the plastic clasps that held the collar together was practically snapped off at one of the edges. The badge was smashed to bits and scratched in many places, so it was impossible to read the name written on it. There were also traces of blood that stained a big part of the collar. Honestly, it would have been easy to not know it was Marshall's necklace if I hadn't seen the light red fabric that peeked underneath all the blood. I looked at the collar and then to my partner, who had a look of worry plastered on his face. I immediately grabbed my police radio and dialed the chief of police. Chief Marcus, this is Officer Michael. Any updates? Did you find the pups? Negative, Chief. I did find Marshall's collar, covered in blood. Copy. Keep me posted, officer. I put my radio away and kept looking around the dense forest. Now, the darkness of the night had practically taken over the forest. After a few more minutes, we found Suma's and Rocky's collars as well, but in worse conditions than Marshall's collar. The collars had been smashed to pieces and turned to shreds by some claws that ripped through the fabric. I felt anxiety fill me up as I pressured on searching, hoping, and praying to God that the pups were safe. It didn't take long for me to get a whiff of the scent of iron. My partner and I continued to follow the path, with the smell getting stronger and stronger with each step. Then, without any warning, I wound up sleeping in a small puddle of some sort of liquid. Once I shined my light at myself to inspect for any injuries, I saw a large amount of blood splattered all over my bulletproof vest in a large puddle underneath me. I checked myself, and I didn't have any wounds. I shined my flashlight at the pool of blood, and I noticed a small trail leading towards a small clearing nearby. I felt hesitant to go, as I expected the worst, but I knew I had to do it. Slowly walking towards the clearing, guns cocked and loaded, we stepped into the clearing. I called out, Marsha, Zuma, Rocky? Then I heard a small, weak moan coming about 10 feet away from me. I shined a light towards it, and my heart sunk to the bottom of my chest. Holy sh Less than 10 feet away from me were the bodies of Zuma, Rocky and Marshall, or at least what was left of them. Suma's head was hanging from one of the tree branches. His head had been ripped straight from his body, his spinal cord holding the dangling pup's head firmly on the branch. Suma's face was mangled and disfigured. One of his eyes had been stabbed by a sharp rock, blood still pouring from the mutilated eye socket. His body lay in a bloody heap below his severe head, untouched and still intact. Rocky had been beaten numerous times with what I assumed was a giant rock, his head being the main target of the brutal assault. Rocky's head was split in half from the blunt trauma with chunks of brain seeping out of the cracked skull. The rest of the body was covered in teeth marks with pieces of skin and muscle tissue turned apart, exposing the bones. Marshall had been completely ripped in half with guts kidneys and liver exposed. I immediately puked after seeing this madness. My partner immediately called for backup on his radio. Obviously, Suma and Rocky were both long dead at this point. However, Marshall was a different story altogether. I had made my way towards him and went to check his pulse. To my surprise, I felt a faint heartbeat. He was also panting very heavily. I remember hearing him moan and whimper in pain as he locked eyes with me. I almost started bawling right then. He was still conscious when he whispered to me, F find my legs. I didn't want to leave his hide, so I called out to my partner to search for his legs, which she found dumb next to a bush. It didn't take long for an ambulance to get there where we were. Suma and Rocky were pronounced dead on arrival, while Marshall was rushed to the ER. However, he passed away during surgery about two hours later. I usually don't cry during 911 emergencies, but that day, I bawled my eyes out like a baby. There was a funeral for the fallen pups. They were buried in a coffin painted with the color of the cars they drove for each mission, with flowers and candles surrounding them. 
The mayor herself was the one who presided it. Needless to say, the funeral was brutal, to say the least. There wasn't a single person that wasn't crying their eyes out. Ryder, Sky, and Rubble were shattered. Ryder couldn't even look at the coffins, and Shades was simply unconsolable. Everyone, including Ryder himself, gave a very touching eulogy. They were all buried on the hill of Adventure Bay Cemetery, with large tombstones decorated with gemstones and images of each pub inscribed on each slab of stone. The funeral concluded with each of the deceased pups getting a 12-gun salute from me and my fellow cops. A few days passed. One night, I received a disturbing call. We need help! Please, I... Oh, blood! The lion died. I think that was Chase. You want to know what happened next? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to find out. See you in the next one.